we do have another earthquake situation in California and it was kind of obvious that something more would happen because we do have quite an activity along the San Andreas Fault recently that is a little bit elevated compared to how many earthquakes are normally occurring there. We've talked about Northern California, we've talked about Southern California and we just talked about Southern California a few days ago, south of the Salton Sea, where there it's not directly the San Andreas Fault, where we had that cluster swarm. But now we do have a cluster swarm and you see the map here with the earthquakes along the San Andreas Fault that you basically see here within the last seven days only. And if you wonder here, that big one here, that was a magnitude 6.0 earthquake. That's the Blanco Fracture Zone. And that is not related to the San Andreas Fault, but it's also not related to the Cascadia Fault. But as always, branching out faults, other faults in the area, depending on how big their earthquakes are, they can trigger the big ones as well. So we always have to be a little bit careful and watching the San Andreas Fault here on that map. Yeah, if the San Andreas Fault goes off, we now know, watch my video wiped out, that there's evidence that in the past, the San Andreas Fault and the Cascadia Fault have triggered each other. And what that would, would mean for the West Coast of Canada and the US, California, Oregon, Washington, British Columbia, Canada, the biggest disaster ever. Check out my video in the end screen, guys. But I zoom in now and I'll show you the earthquake swarm that we're talking about right now because we had a magnitude five. Look at this here. This is the Salton Sea. The Salton Sea is at the southern end of the San Andreas Fault. And this here is an area that I told you in my last video, we have to watch very closely because scientists are saying the southern end of the San Andreas Fault is the most locked and loaded. There is the most tension. So what they do suspect if the San Andreas Fault were to trigger, this is a probable location where it all could start. And Indio, you see that settlement here. So where the earthquakes are happening, it's up in the hills, but it's not far away from tightly populated areas. And unfortunately, this is what it is, the red line here that you see, that's the San Andreas Fault. And basically they have built right on the fault or along the fault in that valley. And that's never good. But look at that cluster swarm. Look at that here, how many earthquakes we're dealing with here. I'm, I'm having trouble to even find the five, the magnitude five right now but it certainly is here. We just had another 1.3 while we're talking. So if we zoom in a little bit more, it spreads out. 4.9, they have downgraded it from 5.1 to 4.9, but that's the one I'm talking about. Depth, three kilometers. So you see, very hilly area. It's not directly underneath like a densely populated area, but close enough. So what does that mean? I zoom out again a little bit. So there you go, the red line, that's the San Andreas Fault, right? And uh, here we see the other cluster swarm that we were talking about just, I think it was two, was it two days ago, three days ago, something like this, we can just check, but we still have earthquakes that are happening today, right? So this one is still going on. So is there somewhat a tension transfer going on there? Today's earthquake swarm and the other one that was south of the Salton Sea that was not directly along the San Andreas Fault, but it has definitely raised eyebrows because it happened in a region well known for earthquake swarms and a lot of branched out fault systems that run parallel or towards the San Andreas Fault. And we have multiple studies that say that San Andreas Fault can be triggered by its branch system, by smaller faults that are branching out from the San Andreas Fault system. One fault can trigger the next one and the next one and the next one, and it can travel, right? If there's rocks that are locked and loaded, if it's shaking in one area and it slips, it can transfer to the big one, to the dangerous one, right? It's as close to the southern termination of the San Andreas Fault, what we've seen in the past days. And this 
very, very close, right on, right? It's another cluster of earthquakes in the same area around the Salton Sea, this time near Indio and the Coachella Valley. And of course, naturally, the question comes up immediately, is this the same system that is triggered again and again? Is this somewhat connected with what we've seen over the last few days? The short answer is no. These are different fault zones operating under different mechanical conditions, even though they're part of the same broad plate boundary. But to understand why this is happening at Indio today, um, we need to look at the tectonic setting of the Indio region. Indio sits within the southern segment of the San Andreas Fault System that is locked and loaded. We have the Pacific Plate moves northwest relative to the North American Plate. But I have to say, however, in this area, the San Andreas Fault is not a single simple fault line like it is in some other areas. Instead, it breaks into this vast network of like interact fault strands, strands that are beneath the Indio Hills and the Coachella Valley specifically. There's lots of more tiny fault and systems and that structural complexity is very critical if we look at what's happening there today. So rather than releasing stress in one large rupture, this fault system here tends to distribute stress across like multiple nearby faults. And as the stress is shifting from one strand to another, it produces these repeated and small earthquakes and also bigger one like the 5.1 or 4.9 right now. Some other agencies have it as at 5.1 still. USGS has downgraded it to um, 4.9. So it forms a swarm of earthquakes, this cluster, right? Um, instead of like one classical main shock aftershock sequence. Although we can say so far the 5.1 looks like a main shock to me, but hopefully we will not see a bigger one. But another key factor that we have to really think about um, in this area is the type of deformation that is occurring there. The Indio region specifically experiences something that we call trans <laughs> my tongue, transpression, guys. It's a combination of like sideway faults, strike a sideway motion um, with that, a strike slip motion, strike slip, right? Like the San Andreas fault and also compression. So this leads in some areas to localized uplift, to folding, we see the mountains there, and to stress concentrations in the shallow crust. They are not very deep, right? Which further encourages like clustered seismic activity in this area. And of course, the crustal conditions also play a role. What's the crust like in this area? And the southern San Andreas Fault region, Salton Sea, lies adjacent to the Salton Trough. We talked about the trough with the last earthquake cluster swarm that was a little bit south of the Salton Sea. There's the Salton Trough. This is an area of hot, fractured, and mechanically weak crust that behaves differently than other crustal areas. So we have elevated poor fluid pressure in this area at a depth and that can temporarily reduce friction on faults and that makes it easier for small earthquakes to occur repeatedly over a short period of time. So this combination, we have a complex fault geometry, we have the transpressional stress and we have fluid influenced weak crust. That naturally favors swarm behavior. And what is very important, this swarm does not follow the pattern right now of a foreshock sequence. So there is no super clear escalation in magnitude, I would say so far, because if it's now 4.9, it's still within range. But hey, wait and see, right? We have also no single fault plane that is lighting up right now. And there's no indication that these earthquakes are organizing towards a larger rupture. But as always, there is no indication that they're doing this until there is. And then boof, she's hitting the fizzy. I don't think 
that we have to expect that there, this is still within the normal behavior of that region. And um, why this swarm does show as, oh yeah, this is very active, it is ongoing stress adjustment along one of the most complex segments of the plate boundary in North America. We have to say that it is the crust responding incrementally to continuous plate motion. There is continuous plate motion and that's why we see these earthquakes, guys. There's nothing else that influences these earthquakes, period. So it's not a signal that a major earthquake is imminent. I also want to say that again, because of that continuous plate motion and the distributed stress. So in short, we can say, although the magnitude was higher there right now, the Indio earthquake swarm that we're seeing there right now, we're still, we can still say it reflects normal behavior for a highly complex transform fault zone. But it is, a warning sign or a remind, reminder how active this region is, how tectonically active. And uh, although this swarm is a distrib distributed uh, stress release um, and not an imminent warning of a large event, we have to keep in our minds that we do with the San Andreas Fault, it's overdue. It's locked and loaded, guys, in this area. So that's why we have to always have a closer look at what that could be and how this is developing and now of course i'm on the pulse of this for you guys so thanks for watching please leave this video a like and a hype subscribe if you're new here we're really a great group aren't we guys we're really nice so come and join us and uh yeah if you're interested in in, in everything that's going on elsewhere in the world maybe you want to click one of the videos here in the end screen and i see you in a second bye bye